from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is episode 23, segment one. In our last episode, we used our English listening skills to understand lyrics of songs. That can be a tough job in a second language, as lyrics often have non-literal meanings. Today, we, we're going to stretch your listening skills even further. Today, we'll have you listen to an interview to see how much English you can understand. The interview will be within the theme of our unit on trains and railroads, so you'll have an advantage if you've watched our previous programs. Now, let's ramp up those listening skills with an interview with our first guest on Ramping Up Your English, Tyler Darneal. Tyler, welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Tyler, you took a trip on the Empire Builder. That is the only train of long distance across the West that I have been on but did not do any recording or oh, video. Okay. So I'm so grateful that you're going to say you're going to share with us some of those uh, shots that you took uh, photographically. So could you tell us real briefly uh, where does the Empire Builder go and what's that about? Well, our section starts in Portland, Oregon. We take off from there across the Columbia in Vancouver, down the Columbia River, up into Spokane, across Idaho, um, across Montana, Wisconsin, down into Chicago. Wow, quite, quite a distance then. How long did that trip take? About two days, 48 hours, two overnights on the train. Okay. And were you in the coach of the train or the sleeper? No, we had a sleeper bedroom unit. I see. Uh, when I took that train many years ago, you know, think starving student, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the coach. But even in the coach, the seats are pretty big and they're pretty comfortable. You can spend the night there, although if I'm going... From now on, I'll probably get the sleeper. You know, it is more comfortable in there. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have these images that we're going to share during this interview. And so we might as well start. Now, you actually got on the train. This is actually not the same train, but you got on Amtrak in Eugene. That's right, John. So let's take a look at that, uh, that image of, of the Eugene station. So this is a good jumping off point part for us in Southern Oregon because it's a pretty easy drive and from there up there's several trains that'll take you up north. So let's see another image of the Eugene station and then another one. It's a real neat kind of, you know, very uh, railroadish station, isn't it? And then there you are. There I am, all excited, ready to go. The anticipation is building. Oh, I bet mm -hmm. by that time mm -hmm. you're, you're just, okay, Can't so wait. you get on the train in Eugene and uh, about what time do you end up getting to Portland? We get left about, say, noon on the Coast Starlight train. I see. We go northbound, takes about three hours, drive to Portland, probably approximately 3 p.m. I see. Now, do you have to overnight in Portland, or can you get on the Empire Builder the same day? We can get directly to the Empire Builder the same day. Wow. Well, then you were brave to go outside that station in Portland and take some pictures. <laughs> so let's see some of these pictures uh, that, that you took at the Portland station. It's a really neat kind of station. Now, that's the that's where the river, but here's the station, mm. which you can see from the river, and you know that you're in Portland because it says, go by train. That is the classic sign in Portland. And, and that's a very unique kind of station. It, it has a very interesting history, by the way. It's over 100 years old. So let's take another look, and here you are with your wife, Amber, in front of it. Where, and on that side, it says Union Station. And let's see the next one. Now, this is the inside, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. 
Okay, and I think you have another view of the inside. Isn't that a beautiful station? It's, it, it's not the busiest station on Amtrak, but it is a beautiful station. I, as Oregonians, I guess we're proud of there. Anything you want to say about the station while you're there? Just a real nice, spacious place, good place to eat. There's a first class lounge if you happen to be traveling in the um, sleeper car. Oh, you can go okay. in, have a Coke if you want, have a donut, relax, and wait for the train. Wow, and I didn't even know uh, Portland had one of those. Yep. I know some of the bigger cities do. Okay, let's see the next one. And so here, what is your vantage point on here? This is the pedestrian bridge over the train platform just outside the station. I see. So you were pretty brave in getting out there and, mm -hmm. and getting that. So is that the Empire Builder that's waiting in the station, or mm -hmm. is that the Coast Starlight? That might be the Coast Starlight that we just got off of. I see. But it's that super liner, that double, double decker kind of cars that Amtrak has on all That's those right. It's your trains. classic West Coast train. Okay, great. Okay, let's see the next one. So here you are now, uh, if, if I remember right, you're crossing the Columbia River? I believe so, yes. So the, the Empire Builder goes on the northern bank of the, of the Columbia River. It does, that's correct. The Washington side, you could say. Okay. And then let's see what's next here. So there you are. Oh, I bet mm. people from Oregon know that. <laughs> it's a little overcast, but if you look in the background, what is that? That is Mount Hood. Okay, so you get a nice view of that. Let's keep going. Now, uh, you took a, a two journeys, actually, right? You took one in 2010. Ten, that's right. And one in 2014. 2015. 15, uh, Just that's last right. year, about July. Oh, great. Okay, so all these memories are fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. And so in at least one of those journeys, you ran into quite a bit of snow. Uh, we did. The first journey was very, very snowy. Okay. Well, that's the beauty of the Empire Builder. If you want mm -hmm. snow, even if you're taking a spring or a fall trip, you're likely to get it. So here's some snow uh, snow pictures that you got. We can go through those. Uh, you got some really nice, you see the evergreen trees up mm, there in the mountains. Beautiful, beautiful. That's probably crossing the Cascades, I'm, I'm guessing. Or it must be Cascades heading, heading through Washington State. Oh, yeah. And then they had that whole sawtooth tooth range that's kind of pressed right. up against that. So if you're, if you're a geography person, you're, you're tracking pretty well with us there. Boy, those almost look like glaciers coming down from there. <laughs> Let's see some more. So uh, you had lots of good shots. Now, this is one of the roads. So mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Tyler, but I always have a thought when I see a highway or a car from a train. I don't know if you had the same thoughts. Like, oh, thank goodness I'm not driving this. Exactly, especially during a uh, traffic slowdown. See trucks and cars stopping inside the sleeper car, glass of wine perhaps. I'm comfortable. The boiler's <laughs> running. I'm happy they're not. So. Oh, this, this <laughs> sounds good. Now, in your sleeper, what, what do you have in there? Basically, in your Superliner sleeper, you have a bed. You have two chairs, and you have your own private sink, bathroom, and shower. Oh, okay, so that's the full bedroom. That's right. Okay, so very comfortable in there. Very comfortable, wonderful accommodations. Now, how, how's the service? How, how uh, you have a car attendant in there? We do. He's very, very good. They come by usually every hour, check on us if we need anything. We want a drink. We want to order from the meal menu if we want to eat in our car. They bring us a reservation list for the diner car if we want that. Very attentive. So when they say first class, they mean first class. It service. is first class. Okay, that's great. Now let's see. Uh, let's see what else you have because this this route has lots of scenery. Mm. Now uh, that's uh, the train itself. Looking at the um, the baggage car. Yeah, that's the baggage car. And let's go on to the next one. So this is waiting at the station. I yep. think are the names of, of this. So two locomotives I've noticed, and for those long distance trains, they always have two locomotives on Amtrak. Okay, so there we're waiting at the station as well. I just love looking at trains. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I imagine you do. Okay. I love it. Okay, so let's see the next one. So that's kind of looking back. So in back of the baggage car, you have the sleepers and then the dining car and the viewing car, right? And then the coaches. That's right. And our section was in the very back because from Portland, they connected us with the Washington units in Spokane. Oh, that's right. I should mention that half of this train leaves Seattle and you meet up at Spokane and make one train out of the two. That's right. Okay. So let's go on to the next one and see. Gosh, I just can't, can't hardly wait. Now, mm. this train goes to Glacier National Park, uh, right? That's classic, the lodge. Classic lodge right there. Wow. And, you know, uh, the railroad helped establish a lot of these national parks in the western United States. 
So let's go on to the next one, and that's getting off the train. You knew that guy's name. Yeah, this guy is Alfred. He was very attentive, one of the best we've ever encountered on Amtrak. Good sense of humor, knew what was going on. Okay. A-plus quality. Yeah, it really helps when, when these guys are, are on their game. Mm -hmm. I should mention that attendants on the train ride it as long as you do. So if it's a 48-hour ride, they're on there for 48 hours. That's right. The engineers and conductors, about every eight hours, they, they switch them for safety reasons. And uh, so let's, let's go on and see the next one. So the Alfred, goodbye. Mm -hmm. And here we're, now we're, pat, we're, we're east now. And this, this one really reminded me of my surprise. Western Montana, a lot of it is as flat as a pancake. So you've got all these, these mountain views first, and then you're out on the, on the Great Plains. Let's see the next one. Uh, another classic station stop at Havery. Kind of got the old-fashioned refreshment sign here, the old classic Great Northern Station. Yeah, okay, let's see what's next. And now, here it is. And you mentioned Great Northern. That is Jim Hill's Railroad for, for rail fans. They, they know that. And what a beautiful locomotive they have on display there. I think we have several views of this one. So let's see the next view of that. They have all this information on it, which we're not going to take the time to read. Maybe our viewers should go on the uh, Empire Builder and they get to read it for themselves. <laughs> okay, so next one. And then that's, that's that symbol, that goat symbol of the Great Northern Railway. And the next one. And then there's a, a close-up. By the way, that previous shot, don't go back to it, but that's called a tender that they put to tend the locomotive. They had coal back there in the day and then the oil. So let's go on to the next one. So now we're in North Dakota. You, anything memorable about the... Uh, just a Why good not? station stop, maybe 20 minutes, get out, stretch your legs, walk into the station if you want, to do a crew change. And you're pretty close to the border by you here. You really are. You can just about see Canada, if I'm not mistaken, from this place. And uh, that's pronounced my not. My not, yes. That's how the crew pronounces it, at least. And I'm trying to remember, so why not go to my not? <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. So that's my not again, and we have the next view. And the next view along here is... I do believe that is the next station down the train, but I can't recall the exact location of this one. Okay, so, so we're probably not in North Dakota anymore. We might be in Minnesota. Let's go to the next one. I think this is a close-up of the sign. There oh, we're in St. Paul. So that's the biggest population center I think you see after leaving Portland, isn't it? That's right, it sure is. So a lot of rural America in there. Really is, a lot of rural towns. Yeah. A lot of stuff like that. Really neat. Okay, so let's see the next one. And is, is that downtown uh, St. Paul? I'd say it is Minneapolis, St. Paul, one of the two. Always impresses me how clean those cities appear yeah. from, from the train track. Okay, and then the next one? Um, here's the Greyhound slash Amtrak stop, probably Minneapolis, I'd say, here. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Um, what is that, and what, what's it doing on your train? <laughs> this is a private car that showed up somewhere around Glacier National Park. Okay. A uh, private entity owns this. They just pay Amtrak a fee, and they hook onto the back of the train. It goes for as long as they want. I see. And uh, I've often been on trains that do have these uh, private yeah. cars. Not all of them have the dome like that. No. Let's look at the next one, and they have names, as you can see. And let's go to the next one, and you can see... Uh, see it off on the side, and then the next one is over the top of it. And did you take this from the back? I uh, sure did. We're in the Portland section. We just go to the back of the train, go out the back window, and took that photo. One of my favorites. I learned how to cheat a little bit in video work. If, you, if there's nothing on the back of the train, mm -hmm. and you shoot from the back of the train, and then you play it backward, it looks like you're, you're doing a cab ride. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the that's next cool. one, because I, I see we have uh, two minutes left. So that's just the Burlington Northern mm -hmm. Santa Fe great big train company, one of the few left. And there, let's go to the next one. We're going to go pretty quickly through those. So that's boarding the train, and then the next view will show Canadian Pacific, and the next one will show the Mississippi River. So that's pretty mm -hmm. exciting to see that, I imagine. Let's see the next one. And this is also crossing the Mississippi. And now we're to the next uh, shot. That's some new equipment. And once in a while, because of the, uh, the, one of the 
stimulus programs. Uh, Amtrak was finally able to buy some new equipment, and, uh, and it's made in America, made in the United States. Fantastic. Okay, we have one minute left, but uh, we're going to keep going. And so some people might recognize that symbol from the Red Wing boots. That's right. Let's go on to the next shot. And we're going to go pretty quick through Portage, Wisconsin, and then the other one to Portage, and then the next one. So once in a while, just like a little warming hut, like you said. Right. Common sight from, the, from any train on oh, these yeah. crossings. So it's kind of neat the mm -hmm. first time you, you hear those ding, 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 and you realize that they're stopping for you. Okay, the next one. Pretty classic northern train station, isn't it? That's fantastic. You see a lot of these along the way, these old-fashioned stations. Even the colors, okay. So let's go on to the next one. Wisconsin Dells, a fantastic town, very, very beautiful. Okay, let's go to the next one. And just to, uh, to let uh, our technical crew go, no, I'm going to go a little bit longer than the wrap-up time, but we, we will kind of speed things up in the, in the views. So let's see the next one. So now we're in Chicago, and let's see the next one. Lots of rail, Chicago, mm -hmm. as you know, is a big hub. Next Uncharacteristically one. empty, though, I might add. <laughs> yeah, really. There's the Chicago River, next one. And the Chicago Union Station. Classic, my favorite station in all of the United States. A beautiful, beautiful place. Okay, so, so and that's the Chicago Sun-Times. So let's very quickly go through these to give a little bit more. These are kind of the highlight views, okay? So my crew's just going to go through pretty quick. We won't have a lot to say because it's mostly just looking at all oh, this mm. incredible scenery that you got to see on this. Isn't that just great? And we're coming up close to your favorite shot. That almost made my favorite one. There's a story with that bridge, but we'll have to tell it later. There's a nice Certainly. sunset. There that's your is. favorite shot awesome, right there with awesome that fence shot. in the snow. Love that shot. And then that's a gorgeous shot in anyone's view. And then here comes my favorite shot. And gosh, that's just uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. So Tyler, thank you so much for, for sharing with us these great views and great stories of Absolutely. your trip on the, on the Empire Builder. My pleasure to be here. Okay, so we'll return with more of Ramping Up Your English right after this.